Hi guys, welcome to another video. I have an amazing bag collection and I know I'm blowing my own trumpet but I'm very blessed to have it and I was thinking if you guys want to know what is the best bag from each of the top top fashion houses I've done a video recently where I said I have the ultimate collection <laughs> and it was very tongue-in-cheek but what I meant by that was I have what is perceived to be the top the best bag from each of those top fashion houses. But does that mean they're the best ones you can get? Well, let's find out. Let's get going. So in this video, I am gonna talk about the top fashion houses, those luxury brands that we all dream of. <laughs> we're gonna talk Hermes, we're gonna talk Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Dior and Fendi. They are the ones I'm talking about today. So which is the best bag? Let's start with Hermes. Let's start with Hermes. Which is the best bag that you can buy? from Hermes. Now I have had my issues with Hermes. <laughs> I have done many a video and I will link I will link one of them or a couple of them up here and down below but it doesn't mean that I don't love the products. I have an issue with the customer service. I have a little update on that as well so hang fire because later on I'm going to tell you my update but suffice to say that I have an absolute number one favourite bag from Hermes and it's this one, <laughs> it's the Birkin. I love the Birkin and for me, I've talked about this in quite a few different videos, um, I just think it's that all round fabulous bag it doesn't have a shoulder strap but would I ever use it with a shoulder strap I sort of don't think I would not this style of bag I think it suits the top handle and this is the Birkin 30 it's in blue onk which is a, an absolutely gorgeous um it's like a dark blue but it has that slight purple indigo undertone it comes up slightly brighter on my screen because of my lights but in real life it is slightly darker and it is a beautiful neutral for me anyway the Birkin for me is the one it is the most recognizable it is quintessentially Hermes whenever we talk about Hermes we always talk about the Birkin I know there is the Kelly as well and I have my Kelly down here somewhere and I love the Kelly I really do but the Birkin has my heart I also am having a little bit of a I'm not saying I've fallen out with the constants, but it is not my favourite for sure. So I would go always, always, always for a Birkin. It's just the best. So yes, this is the ultimate bag from Hermes. And this is what's deemed to be the pinnacle. So in that respect, I agree with that. I agree. So that is Hermes. Let's talk Chanel. I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Chanel. I'm not going to lie. It is not my favourite brand. I have never had amazing customer service at, at Chanel. I've had okay customer service, but I've never forged a relationship with anybody at Chanel. And that is very unusual for me. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't get on so well with some of the styles. The prices are just crazy. But anyway, I do have a few Chanel bags because they are beautiful at the end of the day. So the ultimate bag that you would think is the ultimate is this one. And this is the classic flap. I only have one classic flap in my collection. I've only ever had one. And this is it. This will go nowhere, nowhere. I love this bag. It's very sentimental. I don't use it that often anymore, but I will never, ever, 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 ever let this one go it is too sentimental to me I love caviar and I've talked about that in so many videos so I struggle with Chanel a little bit because they do so much lambskin and I'm just not a fan I'm just not a fan so anyway this is the ultimate bag I would suggest that most people would think about when they think about Chanel but is this the best bag that Chanel do in my humble opinion well, no, it's not. It's not. 
the the strap drop of this well across all of the classic flaps i think they've just got it wrong they've just got it wrong the medium large and the small sizes the chain is so short it is a definite shoulder bag you can't wear it cross body this one is super long and it actually fits on your shoulder doubled up actually very nicely and it's very comfortable but that is the only way that i would wear this so it just makes it not as versatile there's no top handle I love a top handle but it doesn't mean I have to have a top handle but this for me is not it's not the best bag from Chanel but I do have try not to throw this down I do have what I think is the best best bag from Chanel and it is my latest one from Chanel and it is this one this is the mini now yes it's very reminiscent of the classic flap but it's not classed as a classic flap it doesn't have the double flap so for me this is this is just fabulous it's got an amazing strap drop on this it is the perfect perfect length crossbody i suppose i would have it a smidgen longer so maybe it's not quite perfect but it is pretty much pretty much there you can fit quite a lot in it it still has that if you look at these two at the side of each other it still has that look doesn't it of the classic flap so i love that i love the quilting so it is quintessential chanel it just I don't know it just adds a little bit more versatility it is light it's easy to use since I bought this I bought this pre love from bag Easter and I got this at what I think is a really good price I did a bit of a bag swap with bag Easter with my um, my red lady Dior and I do not regret that at all I love this and I haven't had this that long and I've used this loads of times loads of times already it's easy it's stylish anyway this is the best bag I also have another couple of bags. I have the Wallet on Chain, which is here, and I think that's a fabulous bag. I have the Chanel 19, fabulous bag. I have the Deauville, which is over there somewhere, fabulous bag. So there are a few contenders, to be fair, but this is the one that I would pick. So for me, this is the ultimate Chanel bag. So if you only are getting one Chanel bag, go for this one. Don't forget later I'm going to give you a an update on Hermes because the saga always continues doesn't it and I know a couple of people have reached out to me and asked me for an update so I will quickly tell you what is going on. Anyway let's go on to who should we do next? Dior. Let's do Dior. There is one bag for me. Did you see a bit of it there? There is one bag for me that is for me the ultimate bag from Dior that you can buy. Now, some people may say that it is the Lady Dior. That is the classic. That is what would be classed as the ultimate bag. The bag that a lot of people think about when you say the name Dior. So what do I think? Well, I don't love the Lady Dior and we've talked about this and I had two Lady Dior's and I've sold both of them. But what I have instead is this one. So this isn't the Lady Dior, this is the Dijo, but it is so similar, so so reminiscent, but it's it just eliminates the things that were really annoying about the Lady Dior. So for me, this is the one. For you guys, if you want a classic bag, the ultimate bag from Dior, just go for this one. It is so versatile. This is the DJ and it is the medium size. For me, the small size is just that little bit too small. This one is still, it's not a massive bag at all, but it just gives you that extra little bit of space. And what can I say? I love it. It's got the flap. I don't, I don't mind the flap. A lot of people find it really annoying, but because I think it is um, quite wide entrance because it is the East West version, it's, it's so easy to use and get in and out of and it just it, I don't know it just covers the the top of the bag it keeps your things from falling out I don't mind the flap the handles now the handles are still a little bit jangly and the charms a little bit jangly and I don't do well with jangly jangly things I don't love them but I forgive this bag I forgive it because the handles go down so when you're wearing this crossbody the handles go down 
if you particularly want to you can put the crossbody strap on diagonally onto these d-rings so here and here if you particularly want to and that if you put them on the outside it will keep the handles up so if you love that look you can still do that but what this DJI has it has the d-rings at the edges here so you can use those and your crossbody strap goes here the handles stay down it's so easy it also comes with so that is the crossbody strap which is nice and thin unassuming and it also has this chain handle that just again you can put it just on the d-rings and it just makes it a little bit more dressy so for me it's such a versatile bag you've got the dressy nature of this you can just have it as that literally just a top handle bag and you can have it like this you can have it with the chain you can have it with the cross body you can make this shorter and make it into a shoulder bag if you like a shoulder bag you can have the chain on dangling down while you're wearing it cross body it's fabulous it's not cheap but it's cheaper than the lady dior so for me just get this and actually they do the dj in some really amazing colors like this one this is called mulberry this is a beautiful a beautiful purpley it's got a slight pinky undertone but not too much because i'm not a pink lover generally um but also they do the wicker version in the dj they do um fabric versions tweed versions there's always something quite innovative so DJI for the win. DJI for the win. Let's talk Fendi. Okay, so I have never been the biggest Fendi lover. I had dabbled <laughs> with a peekaboo years ago, direct from store. I ended up selling it. It's a whole story. I really wanted a Kelly. I <laughs> sort of tried to scratch the itch with the peekaboo. I got the wrong size. I, yeah, what what they had didn't exactly suit me, but I bought it anyway. And then three weeks later, I got the call for the Kelly. And anyway, I ended up selling it. <laughs> and I've never bought a peekaboo since. And then more recently, I've bought the Fendigraphy and the um, Fendi Baguette pre-loved both of them I have moved on I think I made a mistake a little bit with the fendigraphy as in it was slightly trend driven and it lost its um, novelty with me the baguette I loved I just bought the wrong colour so I will buy another baguette in the future I also have this beauty if you can see this one I also have this which again I bought pre-loved this is the mini baguette and I love this bag so this is an absolute contender for the ultimate ultimate bag from Fendi you guys may think it's the peekaboo and it may be so but the baguette in particularly the mini baguette is so versatile again little top handle that's um, detachable it's got a cross body chain which is again the perfect length I love it however something else has stolen my heart if you've seen my recent video you will have seen this already just look at this this is honestly it's like i oh, honestly i still haven't used this bag i've literally just filmed the unboxing and yeah and the stickers are still on so okay this is just for you meredith this is just for you there we go <laughs> I will take all of them off later but I'll take those so you can at least see see the beautiful hardware but yeah the Fendi first and I'm not sure if I said in my previous video this is the small size so apologies if I didn't um the midi size is actually a fantastic size as well I think the medium is very very big and quite bulky um but the midi size is fabulous but they don't do it in very many sort of interesting styles and and like the sequins so anyway this is the small and it is a fabulous size it is slightly awkward i'm not gonna lie um getting your things in and out but there's actually quite a lot of room at the bottom you just have to maneuver to get them in and once they're in and obviously you have to be able to close it but the bottom section is actually reasonably big so anyway i think the fendi first <laughs> is a contender for the ultimate Fendi bag because it is a showstopper and to me an ultimate bag from a fashion house like Fendi should be a showstopper there should be something about it that isn't just ordinary and this is far from ordinary isn't it it's just oh, unbelievably beautiful <laughs> it is 
just beautiful. I, honestly, the colour does not come up on screen as it is in real life. It is so spectacular. It's a very dark uh, midnight blue. It's just, anyway, it's just beautiful. For me, this is a showstopper. It comes with the crossbody strap. It's amazing as a clutch. I'm just going to rock it as a clutch, I think, when I first actually do start using it. But I think this is the ultimate Fendi bag. I think this will be in my collection forever. It's one of those special, special pieces. And I know I'm not going to use it that often, but does the ultimate bag mean that you have to wear it all the time? Not necessarily for me, the sort of those special pieces. So Fendi first, love it. Okay, Louis Vuitton. There are a lot of contenders for Louis Vuitton. I think it is my favourite brand. It didn't used to be. It did for like 30 years. And then I went on to other brands and then I've come back to Louis Vuitton. And I just, it always has my heart, it really does. So you might see my two mini capucines up here and you might be saying, are they not the ultimate bag? Well, they are. They are, but I show those two bags so often that I thought I will show you my other beautiful capucines today, which is the flower crown um, in the mother of pearl. Honestly, if you just have a look at this, again, the camera does not do this justice. The inlay is just spectacular. I went for black. I just thought it just so classic, so classy. And this is obviously in the BB size. And this one comes with a crossbody strap. I don't think I would ever wear this crossbody. For me, this is, it's probably a top handle bag, but I do like having the strap just in case. So for me, is the ultimate bag the Capucines? Is it the BB? Is it the mini? Oh, do we have some other contenders? Well, the Petite Mal, the Petite Mal for me, is quintessential Louis Vuitton, isn't it? When you think of Louis Vuitton, does your mind not go to the Petite Mal, particularly in this iteration with the monogram? It's like a mini trunk, it is just beautiful. I love it. So that is a definite contender. Maybe the ultimate bag in my collection, if I had this in an exotic, maybe I would choose a Petite Mal, but this is a forever piece and an ultimate, ultimate, uh, winner and favourite so that definitely has to have a mention I also really love and it's up there my cousin bag I wouldn't say it's the ultimate Louis Vuitton bag to buy but it is a fabulous one it is so soft and so easy to use you can dress it up dress it down it's a fabulous bag and it's very very underrated not many people talk about it so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there are a few contenders, aren't there? But I'm going to stick with the Capucines because for me, if you want the ultimate bag from Louis Vuitton, you have to have a Capucines. And this is one of my absolute favourite versions of the Capucines. It's just, it's just special. It's just beautiful. Now, I did promise you an update on Hermes. So this is where we are up to. I have managed to find a new sales associate in Manchester. And I explained, I just went in store one day and I got chatting to her and I just told her the whole situation. Now I had done this before <laughs> and I mentioned this in the previous video. I had been into Manchester before. I had got somebody's name. She gave me her WhatsApp. I WhatsApped her about a pair of earrings. I didn't hear a thing. And still to this day, I still haven't heard a thing from her. So I thought that my journey in Manchester was over as well. And as it happened, I happened to be back in Manchester and I was with the lovely Steph from Handbagaholic. And we we're talking to one of the personal shoppers at one of the Dior events. And I told her about the situation and she said, come with me because I, you know, I do know the ladies in there and they are super lovely. Anyway, I got chatting to a different lady from the one before and yeah, she's taken my details. And actually we have canceled my wish list in London and I have done a new wish list in Manchester and we will see. I haven't heard anything yet and it's been quite a while, but I don't expect to. But she understood where I was coming from. She listened to me and she was very nice. So this is 
I know some of you guys might be thinking you are flogging a dead horse. At what point are you going to say walk away? However, this is like the last throw of the dice for me of saying, do you know, I've managed to do another wish list and it's in Manchester and it suits me better. It is closer. It's still not easy to get to, but it's easier than London and cheaper to get to than London. So I have more opportunity to pop in and forge a relationship in Manchester. So that's what I'm going to do. And this is the last throw of the dice. And that is it. That is my update. <laughs> I don't know if I will ever, ever buy another Hermes bag. We will see. We will see. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on another one.